Happy Christmas. This video is going out on the 25th of December. If Happy Christmas offends you, you might want to stop watching now. This will be a problematic video about problematic authors. Here in Georgia, the 25th of December is a normal working day. That's Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state. And normal working day, if this wasn't during a pandemic when the normal working day is no longer a normal working day. The big celebration here is New Year. On the 31st of December, families get together, they exchange presents, then at midnight, fireworks fill the sky and people celebrate. Christmas is observed on the night of the 6th to the 7th of January and practicing Christians will go to the churches and hold a vigil to see in Christmas. Although this time again, because of the pandemic, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Anna, when yeah. is Christmas? In 31. Are you still here? Great. Welcome to my channel about books and reading and stuff. My name is Jim. As I said at the beginning, this video will be about problematic authors and this could be a problematic video for some people so if this will trigger you or upset you you can turn it off now if you're watching this on the 26th or any time before the 1st of january then happy kwanzaa and if that offends you you can unsubscribe i don't want you watching these videos uh, kwanzaa what is kwanzaa Google is your friend. You can have a look at Kwanzaa and what it's about. Uh, I see the Americans will say happy holidays. I prefer just happy Christmas. I come from a multicultural town called Slough in the south of England. And when I was growing up, I'd wish everybody a happy Christmas. Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, atheists. Nobody seemed offended by that. I don't get this happy holidays thing. But if Happy Kwanzaa or Happy Christmas offends you, this isn't the video for you. I've noticed in the recent anti-TBR tag that a lot of the authors I love and whose works I love have been flagged up as being problematic. First one I want to talk about is Stephen King. Stephen King is considered problematic because of his use of the N-word. I'm not going to say the n-word, I don't say the n-word, and I realise the problem with the n-word. Stephen King uses the n-word frequently in many of his books. He uses it to reveal something of the inner ugliness of some of his characters, like when Annie uses it in his book Misery, but for me this is no excuse. Other writers like Agatha Christie and Joseph Conrad have even used the N-word in the titles of their books. Here in Tbilisi the other day, a mini convertible went past. There were four guys in it. They were singing along to a rap song, which used the N-word many times. And they were singing along seemingly oblivious to its connotations. This is a problem when English is not your first language, you don't realise what these words mean, what the history of this word. And the history of the N-word is tied in with slavery. It's tied into a time when people from Africa were taken as slaves to America, where they had no rights. They were seen as more like animals and humans, and they could be thrown overboard. They were bought and sold like beasts in the market. It was, it's for a white person to use the N-word it has to be pejorative, it's not acceptable, which is why I don't use it. And it's difficult for me to defend Stephen King's use of it. I'm not, I'm not defending his use of it. He's still a writer, I enjoy re reading, but this is a problem. On his video, Anabashadi Reggae, I'll link to his video here, has a video where he discusses whether rap singers, hip hop, artists should retire the n-word because of its problematical nature. He is very knowledgeable about the rap scene, about rap lyrics, 
and is far more authority about the N-word than I do. Dr. Zeus. I love Dr. Zeus. I learned to read with Dr. Zeus. This has a lot of nostalgic resonance with me, but from looking at some of the anti-TBR tags, I find out Dr. Zeus, his early cartoons portrayed racial stereotypes, which is a problem. Jeremy Clarkson, very controversial figure. I don't agree with his views, but he is very funny and he's very entertaining to read. Now I've just read Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. In this, there is some problems with racism. She describes Mrs. Reed, a hateful character till the day she dies, as having a dark and opaque skin. And she writes of John Reed, Jane's spoiled and entitled male cousin, that he, he calls his mother old girl too, and sometimes reviled her for her dark skin similar to his own. And, spoiler alert here, her choice of villain is a woman of mixed race from the West Indies, where slavery has not been abolished during the era depicted. Now, someone like Charlotte Bronte wouldn't have imagined people of colour would even be reading her novels. This makes her novel problematic for a modern reader. These two, J.K. Rowling and Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie have been problematic authors, are problematic authors in some people's eyes because of this turf thing, which I don't really understand. You can explain this to me in the comments below. It's a debate between the radical feminists and the transgender people, that the transgender people aren't real women, they're trans women. And some people take offense at this. I don't even know where I stand on this, but these came up as problematic authors. And I really loved Americana about a Nigerian woman who emigrates to America, then goes back to Nigeria. And I've read three of the Harry Potter. We have the poet, the Georgian poet, Josef Yugashvili. You might know him as the murderous dictator, Stalin. But should I read his poems? Should I engage with him? Charles Dickens, for some, is a problematic author. He was misogynistic. He neglected his wife. But in this book, Dombey and Son, he's very sympathetic at the female characters, particularly Edith, but also Florence. And he's not sympathetic with Paul Dombey, who's got a very patriarchal attitude. Charles Dickens has also been cited for being anti-Semitic because of his portrayal of Fagin in Oliver Twist. Fagin in Oliver Twist is often just referred to as the Jew and is this terrible character. But in his last book, Our Mutual Friend, there's the character Mr. Rhea, who is also Jewish, but is a very sympathetic character. So with these problematic authors, I, we can't say it's black and white. It's more shades of grey. And even talking about black and white could be problematic. English is a racist language, like French is a racist language. English, a white lie is okay, a black lie isn't. White magic, that's fine. Black magic is for evil. We have words like blackguard, blackmail. These are bad. But we have things like pure as the driven snow, so white is somehow good. In French, travail noir is working illegally. A marché au noir, the black market, this is bad. So even the words we use are problematic. Alexandra Fuller was born in Britain. She grew up in Rhodesia, Zimbabwe. She says by her own admission that her parents were white supremacists, yet she loves them. She's not a white supremacist, but she's writing here about the Lakota tribe in North America. Can she write about Native Americans not being one herself? Is this a problem? I don't know, you tell me. I don't know what to make of all these problematic authors. I have my own problematic authors, authors I won't read like Ayn Rand, Adolf Hitler. If 
you like this video you can like and subscribe if you don't like this video you're welcome to unsubscribe I wish you all a happy Christmas and if that causes you offence so be it and happy Kwanza Kwanza from the 26th and I will see you on the next video if you're still around bye